Hi, Dave Jack here, Superintendent of Falkir County Public Schools with another weekly update. Um, this is for the week of July 20th. I have four things to go over with you quickly. First is uh, the unveiling or the opening of a website, www.fcps1reopen.org. That's www.fcps1reopen.org. The purpose of this website is to promote provide up-to-date information relative to the reopening of school in the fall. It's very helpful. It includes a very lengthy FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions, section. I ask that folks please start there. We, we are being inundated with questions um, for me personally and then for staff, and it's really hard to keep up with them. We're trying, but it's hard to keep up with them. Many of the answers to the questions that are being sent to us are contained in the FAQ section. If they are not, there's a button there you can you can click on and you can add questions. And as I mentioned, the website is updated daily. So we'll get that those answers to those questions to you as quickly as we possibly can. But uh, we ask again that you start. And, and the, the website and uh, the FAQ portion of the website, they, they come on the heels of a video that our public information officer sent out that was sort of an overview of the AAB DB mixed delivery model and the 100% virtual model. It was not intended to be an exhaustive, complete, specific plan. It was just to provide an overview. The specific plan is coming on July 27th. And I want to talk briefly just a little bit about July 27th. July 27th is a very important date because I told, I've told staff that we need to have this the specific plans in place by July 27th so that we can sit down with the school board and share them with them uh, piece by piece specifically. So this will be an important day for parents and that we'll, we'll have a lot more up-to-date specific information. However, you know, I've heard from parents who have said, well, I'm, I'm not going to, we're not going to be able to make a decision about which direction we want to go by the 27th. We're just not going to be there. We still need a lot more information. We're still trying to decide. It's okay. Um, the 27th really is something that's uh, it really helpful to us selfishly in order to get things uh, planned, to plan for transportation, uh, classroom configurations, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it, it's really helpful for us to have that information by the 27th. But if, you, if you're not there yet as a parent, as far as having what you need to make a decision, it's, it's okay, we're still, we're gonna obviously work with you and accommodate you. Uh, so just keep, please understand that. It's it, it's really more of a deadline for my staff, um, but uh, if you can help us out and make a decision, it'd be really helpful. Now the OLR piece, this is another thing I need to talk to you about. Uh, part and parcel to that information is uh, the online registration resource. So we shut down the online re registration site for a few days in order to add some questions that are, again, are helpful to us as we look, uh, are planning for a reopening. And the, the online registration includes questions about transportation, includes questions about, new questions about uh, parents and if they're, if they're choosing the 100% online option, et cetera. And, um, that's, we did that so we wouldn't have to do another survey and that, because I think people are surveyed out. So we did this through OLR with the, with the knowledge that, you know, every parent has to, has to participate in the online, online registration uh, program. So that's why we did it that way. Um, and getting that information in as quickly as possible uh, is really helpful to us as we move forward and we, and we plan. Now, having said that, I will say this. Um, even after the 27th, I suspect that we'll be continuing to make adjustments. We'll, we'll, we will have to, uh, so, uh, kind of, we'll kind of reserve the right to adjust even beyond the 27th, probably most likely nothing significant, nothing major, but, um, there will be adjustments and we'll communicate those adjustments to you. Um, all right, COVID. So let, let's talk about COVID. And, and by the way, when it comes to questions, we, the questions that are coming in, we, we are a relatively small school division. And in many instances, 
we have one or two people who are resp sort of responsible for responding to and, and, and planning for X, Y, and Z. And we don't have large departments dedicated to uh, planning, et cetera, et cetera. So what I've told staff is let's get it right. And this is really a timing issue. Let's get it right. I'd rather give the right information out than the, the quick information. Let's get it right. If that takes a little more time, it's okay. If we have to make an adjustment, for example, after the 27th, it's all right. Let's get it right. Because I can tell you just for me personally, in a few instances, I have provided the wrong information. I've had to backtrack and say, no, actually I said this, but actually it's this. So and I don't have any problems confessing that to anyone. That's this is a, a crazy time and we make mistakes and we, we want to make sure we're getting ultimately the right information out and being accurate. And if that takes a little more time, then so be it. And because I know I've heard from parents say, well, by now we, we've already know we already know this. And by now, by this time of the, of the summer, we already know this. You can throw that out the window because we're, we are in a different time now. We, we are you know, getting information and gathering data to make decisions and we want to make sure it's accurate and right. So that's an important component of this. Um, so um, let's talk just f briefly about um, uh, COVID. So um, this question has, or this type of question has come up a lot. What do you What are you going to do as a school division if a a student tests positive for COVID? Are you going to shut the school down? Are you going to shut the classroom down? What, what, do you, what if a staff member tests positive? What if the family member of a staff member or a student member uh, tests positive? What if we suspect that a student or a staff member it, you know, ha is, is positive and, and is demonstrating? Or, or what if we, there, a student in my class is showing signs? Or, okay, here's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna follow, as we've done up to this point, we're gonna follow CDC Virginia Department of Health and local health official uh, recommendations. And what they recommend is we take each of these different situations on a case by case basis. We contact the local health department immediately and connect with the epidemiologist there. And we make good decisions that are in the best interest of our students and our staff. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, the only the one specific thing I can tell you is, uh, you know, there is if someone does does test positive, there is a sort of a minimum quarantine time. So it's very possible that if a staff member tested positive, that w they would have to we have to send them away from work for that whatever that minimum amount of, amount of time. I think it's two weeks, uh, unless there's a, a test that's conducted and it comes back negative. So that that would change that dynamic. So. There are those pieces that uh, we know about, but it, ultimately, as far as how we respond as a school division, it's it will be us working with local health officials and making determinations and decisions that are in the best interest of classroom, the school, and the school division. Uh, so that's that on COVID. Um, so last but not least, I, I do want to just talk, go back, talk briefly, and I just have about a minute here. Just to talk about the whole timing, release of information piece, um, you know, I can tell you that we are we are uh, working hard, as I mentioned, not to repeat myself, although that's what I'm doing. Uh, we're working hard to make sure we're give, getting you the right information, getting you good information, and there's just a lot of misinformation out there, and um, so we're going to continue to to take the time needed to give the right answer and produce the right answer. And the, the goal, of course, is ultimately that, um, you know, we get kids back to school, um, you know, and, and you know, I, I've mentioned uh, what I mean, kids, all kids face to face five days a week. That's the ultimate goal. We're going to we're going to get there gradually, starting with the plan I presented to the school board, which calls for a mixed delivery two days a week of instruction three days virtual. Um, and then by, by the end of the first quarter, we will reevaluate and if, if, again, consulting with local health officials, et cetera, and the school board 
and we'll make a decision about the possibility of going to a four-day uh, work uh, face-to-face for all students with a Wednesday off for, for cleaning, etc. Uh, and then we kind of go from there. We'll have to wait and see where things are in terms of uh, the pandemic and the impact in, uh, in, our, in our school community. And we'll have to make decisions, um, again, that are in the best interest of everyone. So I'm going to stop now because I'm talking way too much. But let me just, again, remind folks, if you have questions, please go to www.fcps1 reopen. Check the FAQ section. And if you have a question that's not included in there, just go ahead and click on that button and add, add a question. All right. Thanks, everyone. Stay safe.